Hello and welcome to a different kind of video. And that's where I'm going to start the voiceover, because I'm about to be wrong. I bought this laptop at the World of Retro Computing event in Kitchener, Ontario, Canada a month ago for the price of $10, as it was not working. Right now in the video, I'm going to try to demonstrate why it's not working, or rather, the symptoms that it's showing to tell me what is not working, but since it turns out to need the keyboard attached to boot, it's not going to show off for us in the video. Here's a picture that illustrates what the problem actually was. Um, the screen would turn on, but uh, only bright white. Right now in the video, I'm saying that I think it's the display connector, as that does tend to fail on uh, this series of power books. But, to cut a long story short, it turned out that the capacitors in the inverter board were bad, and thus the backlight was showing at maximum brightness at all times. However, the process to find this out was quite long, took a few turns, and I think is pretty interesting, so I'll leave this playing mostly in time-lapse form, punctuated by me from the past and me from the present, telling you about what I'm trying to do, and what I actually did do, so that you can follow along with past me's journey of discovery to find out what the problem was with the computer, and uh, then repair it. And hopefully, if you have a computer like this that you're looking to repair, or at least do some kind of diagnosis, hopefully you'll be able to learn from my mistakes from the past, and maybe get your computer back up and running. Enjoy! Hello again! I've disassembled enough of the computer to see what I need to see. The main thing that I think is going on here, and we'll see if I'm right, is this cable, this contact, or this contact, one of the three of them is dirty. Um, as you'll have seen in the time lapse, I did some uh, continuity checking here. I don't know what the pinout is here, and I think it changes in between this connector and here, so I can't say for certain if there's a problem there. And so I'm going to go ahead and use some contact cleaner on each of the three of these. I'll use it directly um, out of this room on here, and then I'll manually uh, clean these. Um, hopefully this will resolve the problem. And indeed, when I reassemble it to test it, I'm going to leave the hard drive and the floppy drive out and put the heatsink back on, hook up the display and just uh, and the keyboard, because it needs that to start. And hopefully I'll get a sad Mac, but I want to see if I can get anything to show up on the screen. Um, talking to some people on a Discord I'm in um, said that the other, or another possibility is that in here there's some uh, caps that are prone to failure. Given that I've got a solid white screen, I don't suspect that's the issue, but if this fix doesn't work, um, I'm going to go ahead and open up the display bezel and see if I see anything. And at worst, I'll order a cap kit, but I think, I think it's probably this cable, but we'll see. Well, it's booting at just the right angle. I can even see the uh, see what it's showing. Only at a really shallow angle. But anyway, it meets the my. 
my screen my cable's definitely working well time to crack open the bezel i think anyway in the meantime There we go, I got a shutdown screen and shut down. Well, it works. So in looking at this, I don't see anything obviously wrong. Um, looking at each of the capacitors, there doesn't seem to be any obvious leakage uh, there either, and the small ones similarly have no issue. If it is a capacitor issue, I figure, from what little I know, probably one of these electrolytics. There's four of them, I can order those, replace them, no problem. Um, interestingly, this is labeled as the backlight control, and it seems like the backlight is a little strong. This is the display interconnect down here. Conceivably, it's some component up here. Maybe one of these has died. Um, unfortunately, there doesn't seem to be any, um, any pots or variable resistors I can adjust here. Um, all there is is these buttons, which are normally hidden behind the bezel, but um, those don't go far enough. So, could be, could be any of these.
All right. Well, Ooh, that's a little loud. All right. Well, hello again. I seem to have found our problem. So let me <laughs> see if I can get my mic over here. Real professional setup here. You should hear me. Um, so we've got... Ugh. It'll be a wonder if I don't break this thing. Oh my god. So, got my multimeter here. Gonna crank that on to capacitance. And right here is the main inverter board for this laptop. Um, it normally lives right here. And it's what supplies, I believe, the power to the LCD screen there. So we know that the LCD has plenty of brightness, um, and the brightness control does come from here. Um, I think the rest of the signals do too, but anyway. Well, I guess the signals come from right here, but the power's managed here. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Backlight control's there. So after much struggling, I managed to get these off, and these are the tiny little capacitors on here. Um, they're a little outside of their rated their ratings, so I see, um, and you know we can see if I can make that come into focus. Yeah, there we go, close enough. Looks like twenty two, probably um, microfarads. So let's uh, let's see if we get twenty two microfarads. Uh, 29 is a little beyond. That's like 30 or 40% off. So, you know, it's still working, but it's too powerful. Let's check the next one. Eight point five, and it is supposed to be six point five. So again, we're like 20% out. And then this one says 220. Well, it briefly tries to do something and then uh, too low. So this one's just dead. Anyway. I'm no LCD expert yet, but I think I think this is why the uh, screen's not working. All right, we're going to test to see if the capacitors or were the problem. So, as I may have remembered to feature in the voiceover or whatever else I'm doing for this video, um, I don't have a 6.8 microfarad capacitor, but I do have a, um, a 4.7. So, one of these is going to be under strength. And I think it's the one for the backlight. And I don't think it matters that much. Um, if it does, I mean, I'm going to be ordering uh, lower profile versions of these because this is <laughs> never going to fit inside the laptop. But it may figure out, or may help me figure out if this is the problem. Plus, I don't think it hurts to uh, replace the capacitors anyway. So, this goes on here. I'm going to do my best to keep this actually outside of the computer. Because these legs obviously don't fit. Doesn't help that they put this nice 
presumably productive, although I can check. Uh, coding. Uh, conductive. Yes, it is conductive. Uh, well, I got some paper. Yeah, that'll work. A professional, I am not. Uh, although you can make me be one, uh, mash that uh, like and subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that bell. Okay, there we go. Um, nothing's touching. Yeah. Okay. Open for the best. Well, it's clicking away at me.
Well, it's back to clicking, but... Hey, there we go. We have life in the screen. We have a happy Mac. Uh, there we go. It's alive. All right. Now to order some replacement parts.
All right, we're back at it again. You can see the um, the new capacitors arrived from Mauser, so we are good to go. Um, got my station set up, last bit of soldering, and then finally I can put it all together. I also picked up a uh, AAUI to RJ45 transceiver that I'll show off a little later. Uh, once I get this thing running. It turns out that I would not get around to showing this off later. Anyway, with that, we should have a working computer. I'm going to go ahead and reassemble it, and then I'll test it. Um, I feel good, and I will put some funny text on the screen to say that I will live to regret this, if indeed I will live to regret this. <laughs> Here we go. Look 
looks great to me. Of course, uh, I don't know how good it looks on your end. MCD. Well, I'd say that that looks pretty good. Mission accomplished. That's it for this machine until I remember to talk about AAUI and Apple Talk. I hope you enjoyed watching my diagnostic and repair process. While the screen on the 520C may not be the sharpest or most vibrant, it's certainly a unique piece of technology that's worth checking out if you're a fan of retro computing or Apple products in general become my go-to machine for classic Mac shenanigans. With a bit of recapping, the screen is a lot better than other passive matrix displays of the early 90s, and the trackpad is better than you'd expect. 